Tonight, Hillary Clinton stumbles. As the polls begin to tighten, will Hillary's 9-11 health scare shrink her lead even more? And how big a story will her health now be? Plus, Hillary's deplorables comment. She's taking heat for insulting Trump's supporters, but have they actually earned the title that she gave them? We will take a closer look. And later, Trump's response and what seems to be a clear double standard where the Donald is involved. Evening, everybody, and welcome to RFL. I'm Richard French. A lot to get into in the world of politics, and also with 9-11 just a day behind us, we'll take you back to some of the more memorable moments and remembrances from yesterday. But we begin with Hillary Clinton's stumbles, both literal and figurative. By now, everyone, they've seen the video of Hillary Clinton stumbling as she left the 9-11 event in Lower Manhattan early yesterday. We'll get into that in depth in just a moment. But it is a bad time for any kind of stumble as you sit just 58 days from the election. And just two weeks from tonight, we will be at Hofstra on Long Island getting ready for the first debate of the general election. Like we said, a bad time for any candidate to stumble, and the numbers suggest that may be happening to Clinton in the polls as well. Let's get a check of those numbers, and for that, let's go to our senior political correspondent, Andrew Whitman. A lot of numbers, Andrew. Where are we? Well, we all knew that the race was going to tighten after the conventions, Rich, and they certainly have, but they now appear to be closing fast, depending on exactly where you look. And keep in mind, none of these numbers reflect Clinton's stumble yesterday. In the poll averages, Clinton's lead is now down to just three points, down from six points back on August 28th. Add the third party candidates to the mix, and Clinton's lead is down to just over two points. That has also been cut in half since August, with the other candidates taking more from Clinton than from Trump. By the way, Gary Johnson now just six points away from qualifying for the debates. But there's better news for Clinton in the major polls. Hillary up eight in the ABC Washington Post poll and up six in the latest NBC poll. Two other quick views of the race right now. First, an election forecast that's based on polls and other factors. Nate Silver and the crew at 538 have Clinton's chance of winning now just over 68 percent. She's still the favorite, but that's down five points since the end of August. And Clinton's also taking hits in the key swing states. She now trails Trump slightly in Florida, where he's picked up four and a half points since last month. And Hillary's leads have shrunk in Ohio, Pennsylvania and North Carolina. The conclusion, again, Hillary Clinton remains the front runner, but her lead is shrinking. And again, these numbers have yet to reflect Clinton's deplorables comment she made on Friday. More on that later in the program and her health scare yesterday. Rich. All right, Andrew, thank you. As for that health scare, here again the video. Uh, it shows Clinton needing help as she steps off the curb and heads into the waiting car. Now, this is she left the 9-11 ceremony yesterday morning in Lower Manhattan a little earlier than was expected. The campaign first said Clinton was suffering from heat as exhaustion, but later Sunday, as you know, the campaign releasing a statement from Hillary's doctor reading in part, quote, Secretary Clinton has been experiencing a cough related to allergies on Friday during a follow-up evaluation of her prolonged cough. She was diagnosed with pneumonia. She was put on antibiotics and advised to rest and modify her schedule. Well, at this morning's event, she became overheated and dehydrated. I've just examined her, and she is now rehydrated and recovering nicely. Now, Hillary's health is potentially a real problem for the campaign, especially given how Trump supporters have been trying to make an issue of her health even before yesterday. Now, with doctored photos in the Inquirer, what's new? Um, Breitbart, you know that name, whose former CEO is now running Trump's campaign, putting out conspiracy theories about a Clinton health cover-up. I want to bring in our panel for analysis on this and much more. Let's go to Jeannie Zeno, professor of political science at Iona College, also senior advisor at the consulting firm Apple. How do I say Applied T E. Applied Techonomics. Applied Techonomics. It's one word. That's what's messing it up. Oh, there's many things. <laughs> messing it up. You got Dominic Carter. You better not have a new name, Dominic. <laughs> political journalist and author, and Andrew, who you already met, our senior political correspondent. All right. Uh, <laughs> Thank you. The numbers, first of all, before we get into, and we will, um, whether how it was mishandled, what it will mean for the campaign. What was interesting last week on Friday, uh, I saw some numbers that said, oh, the, the race is really tightening. It's within two or three points. Then we see national numbers today, eight and six points that she's up, and they say it's tightening even more. Are they really all over the place, or is there a little bit of a consensus? And give a historical to us. Typically, if a candidate's up in the national polls five points or more, what seem to say she is right now, 
Does that candidate usually win, and is this a regular election year? And what you're looking for is consistency in the polls. You know, you can have somebody up eight points one day, down six points another day. You know, that is not good news. What is good news is somebody like Barack Obama, up two points, three points consistently in 2012. So it's the consistency you're looking for in the national polls, not so much how, how ahead they are or behind they are. And what we really want to look at are the state-by-state -state races, those key states, yep. and a compilation of polls from those key states. And when you look at those key states, Andrew just went through this, we do see a tightening. However, we still see a very bad map for Donald Trump. You know, he can't lose some of the states that he is lined up to potentially have at risk. Something like Georgia, for instance. He can't lose Georgia and win this election. So it's still not a pretty picture for Donald Trump, even though the race is yep. tightening. So I think we have to be careful because one thing we know, a debate will happen, somebody will go up and then they'll go down. A stumble like this, she'll go up, she'll go down. But it's that <coughs> consistency in those state by states. And also, this is always about ground game too. And when we talk about the deplorables comment, I think there's something to what she mm. was trying to get at because her ground gain, a game is at least at this point, much better than his. Mm -hmm. And early voting is starting soon. So all of those things play into the mix. Dom, um, with how it was handled first, the health scare from Hillary Clinton. She got diagnosed on Friday with this. We already knew, uh, and, and I think in the, in the wind up to this, we articulated that long before the end of last week, uh, people, Trump was making it clear there was, uh, he had concerns about the health. You have all the surrogates and the Breitbarts and the rest saying this is some giant cover up. And then we have what we see here on the screen. And then we learn that Friday she was told uh, she had pneumonia. And then she was at the event on a Sunday. And now we learn aftermath. Will this be a story five days from now? Or will we move on to something else? This will be an ongoing story, unfortunately, for the rest of this campaign. If you're a Trump team, Team Trump, would you let go of this issue? Of course not. Um, but how about, Dom, the fact that we still don't have his health records and the person who's the put out standard. how great a health he is um, is the same guy that we'll get onto later in the program who says basically he eyeballed him and he's better than dead guys. That's part of the double standard that Hillary Clinton is facing in this campaign. But the fact of the matter is Trump has her on a defensive, Richard, mm -hmm. and <clears throat> the only thing that may change it is the upcoming uh, debate. Yep. You know, <clears throat> her health issues, and it played right into every negative stereotype. By the way, you've been the coughing. Clintons. Is there something we should know? Yeah. Are you covering have, up some but, kind of but, story but here? I do, yeah. But I do want to make this one point, because I brought up a couple of times on this show how rigorous a campaign is, and you guys are, oh, man, I did it for a year, and I didn't know, on a campaign trail, well, and I didn't know well, if I was coming well, to begs, You said it. It begs a question, because what was interesting to me is I heard a lot of folks saying, they blame the campaign for this because the Friday event that she went to, um, a concert, she'd already gotten the checks written. She didn't have to go. They say comparative to other campaigns, forget about the health challenge, et cetera. She goes to events where she doesn't have to go to them. But Trump, Richard, for whatever it's worth, he sleeps in his bed almost every night in New York City. He doesn't do the same travel. Is there, has she pushed herself harder than she needs to? for some of these events. Name a woman in America that doesn't push herself harder than what's necessary. I hope that doesn't sound too sexist, but it just seems like it's in the nature of a woman. When a woman is ill, they push through, and, and I, that's what we're seeing with Hillary Clinton. But Richard, I am telling you, the, and I'm, I know this sounds a bit off, a campaign trail is no joke. I, yep. One night, I started crying like a baby. We started in New York. Oh, we've seen that. No, no, you've yeah. seen that before. We started in New York at now, the, if, if, yeah. the, if, the, if we got to be on the plane at 6, the Secret mm. Service roll call is at 3 a.m. That's the time you got to have your bag downstairs. And we didn't end up in California until midnight local time, which was 3 a.m. New York time. So we went almost 24 hours and hit about three or four states. That's what these candidates go through on a daily basis. It is no joke. The mistake here wasn't on Friday with not releasing the information about the pneumonia. The mistake here was a month and a half or two months ago when she never pushed back on some of these right-wing conspiracy theories about her health overall. She should have gone in and released a full medical record, done another exam, just so that she, that issue was off the table. But because that had been 
percolating in places like Breitbart and The Inquirer and getting enough traction in conservative media, I think there was a, a sentiment in her campaign that she couldn't skip events like the one on Friday. She couldn't relax her schedule because then it would be, where's Hillary and what does that say about her health there? Don't you think, Andrew, the other element that we know at this table is whenever the press feels that they've been fed a false bill of goods, they go overboard now um, to try and say, ah, you, you pulled one over on us, not again. I don't think for the next 58 days, forget about what the Trump campaign does, that the press and the national press following this will let any any benefit of the doubt be extended here if she's not. I think something I, or doesn't do anything I think there's else. absolutely an aspect of that, and we've seen that from fringe stories that have worked their way into the mainstream in the past. I think the Wiener story started as a fringe story, and I think the Spitzer, no, Spitzer was uh, through the, the New York Times. But we have seen that, where the, the, the mainstream media tries to compensate. But, I mean, I think it's worth reminding people that candidates get sick, presidents get sick. President Bush, the first one, vomited on the prime minister of Japan. Um, the, his son, when he was president, collapsed from choking on a pretzel. David Petraeus collapsed during a confirmation hearing when he was nominated, I think, you for know, CIA director. Th there is an interesting idea that came out of this, which is instead of people having, not that doctors are going to lie because it's their career, let alone their reputation, but why not have an independent um, panel of doctors that aren't chosen by the candidates that do an independent, in effect, audit of the health of the candidate here. You want to be president. I, I don't think it should be optional that you release your taxes. I don't think it should be optional that you release your health records. There's certain things that, as the electorate, we should have a right to expect because, uh, you know, that's part of it. You're electing somebody to the most demanding job for at least four years. We should know the state of their health before we elect them. And if you didn't want to do that, you didn't have to run for office. I, what do you think about that idea? Uh, I'm not sure I would go with a panel, but I do agree that they need to be transparent and release these records. And, you know, I am a little concerned about, a, a, you know, a commission or a committee of doctors in part because these people also have a right to privacy with their health. And you're right, they could choose not to run if that's the case. But I do think the press and the public have to hold them their feet to the fire. They've got to release these records. And part of what happened with Hillary Clinton is that she has played this so close to the vest on every level to her own detriment because she has now played into the hands of all these conspiracy theories. Yep. She should have released these records in full, particularly since people think that she is, you know, dodging the truth, and particularly since she's attacking Donald Trump for not releasing his tax records. So this was a big, big stumble on her part, and I think it is her, not her campaign, because by all accounts, they have been pushing her to release, and she once again, just like she did during the Monica Lewinsky scandal during Whitewater, has said, no, 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 we're going to give the press less rather than more, and that always comes back to haunt her. Totally rings the same bell when it the comes to trust, bell. whether whether she's trustworthy, yeah. how transparent she is. I mean, this is the emails all over again, except this is really. And you know what the space. funny part is for me? She has less to hide than her opponent, but in the general public's view, they're the same here. That they're not giving as much, and now in some ways she seems even shadier. Which except it, any independent arbiter looking at the body of work will say, "Come on." Except but that's Hillary Clinton's like. been doing this for 35 years in yep. the public eye. Donald Trump's been doing this for about a year and three months. Fair enough. All right, coming up on the other side of the break, you heard the word deplorable. Well, that is the term that Hillary used to describe half of Donald Trump's supporters. She's already apologized for it, tried to walk the comment back here, but whether it probably was politically stupid, was it actually right? Well, we're going to check the numbers on that, and we'll let you decide.